Hey everybody, it's Taylor with Boyce and Grove, and today we're going to show you how to make a full-size floor easel. Let's get into it. For my floor easel, I'm going to be using four 1x2s that I picked up at the local hardware store. They come pre-sanded and pre-cut to six foot long, and that's the size that I want for my easel anyway, so there's no cutting to be done for these pieces. For the rest of the pieces of the easel, I'm going to be using these 1x3 cutoffs that I have left over from another project. They're already all cut to around 2 feet, so that's perfect for what I need them for, and I'm going to need a total of around 9. That means if you're going to do this project, you're going to want to buy 3 of the 6 foot lengths of these 1x3s from the local hardware store. For the center rail of my easel, I'm just going to be using one of the 1x2s and splitting it in half. I'm going to leave a little gap in between them for the rails to be able to slide up and down. Now there's three different ways you can do this. You can split the piece of wood as I did, or you can use your router and just cut out a groove down the center, or if you don't have any tools to do any of this, you can just buy an extra 1x2. I started by assembling the main frame of this easel, which is pretty easy since all the pieces are already cut to the length that I want. I screwed four of the 1x3s together in an L formation to make two rails that will hold the canvases to the easel. I used the miter saw just to clean up the ends of the rails. I cut four pieces of the 1x3s to fit between the long rails of the easel. I attach them to the back of the canvas rails. These will keep the canvas rails in place on the easel and help them to slide up and down more smoothly. When attaching the rails to the frame, I'm making sure to put the short side of the L against the frame itself. That way the long side of the L is what the canvases will sit on that will give me a little extra room. I decided to use threaded inserts and the star headed bolts for all the moving parts of the easel. That way everything can easily be adjusted or removed if needed. I purchased the inserts and bolts as a kit from Amazon. It comes with a wide variety of sizes of both. I'll make sure to leave a link for the kit in the description below. I'm using three of the 1x3s to make a base for the easel. To start, I added a threaded insert to each side of the bottom of the easel frame to attach the base to. I cut my last 1x2 in half to use as adjustable legs for the back of the easel. While the frame was standing up, I used one of the 1x2s to mark the base pieces where I wanted the legs to sit. I made a total of 5 cutouts on the two side pieces of the base for 5 different positions on the easel. I spaced them 1.5 inches apart and cut them out using a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit and a jigsaw. The positions are really a personal preference as to how you like your easel to sit while painting. So make sure that when you're marking your base pieces that you're keeping the easel at the position that is most comfortable for you to paint at. Once the positions were cut, I added the third 1x3 and attached the base to the frame. In order for the back legs to fold up flat up against the frame when not in use, I needed to add a few small blocks of wood 
to the frame for the back legs to attach to. I was all out of the 1x2s so I cut a few pieces of a 1x3 and cut them to the same width of the 1x2s. Once attached to the frame, I added a threaded insert on each one. Then I attached a 1x3 to the two legs to keep them properly spaced. Now here's where I had to fix my mistake. I grabbed the wrong size bit when I was drilling the holes for the dowel, so the dowel was really loose. That's okay, I'm just gonna put a couple screws in there to hold the dowel in place, and I can always take them out and replace the dowel later. Lastly, I added some really small casters, two with locks to the bottom of the frame and the other two to the back of the base. Despite their size, they're rated for 25 pounds each and so that should be plenty strong enough. I found these on Amazon, I'll leave a link for them in the description below. All right, our floor easel is finished and I'm really happy with the way that it came out, especially the casters. I'm uh, really surprised because they're so incredibly small, but they actually roll really smoothly. They don't get caught up and it doesn't feel like there's any weight on them and they're so low pro. It's just really nice touch, makes it easy to work with. Uh, one of my favorite features about this design is that I use the star bolts for all the adjustable features so that with just a quick turn, you can adjust it to however you want along with the legs and everything. Another thing that I like about this is that when you're finished using it, it folds up completely flat and will fit behind a door or under a bed for easy storage. One of the adjustments I did have to make is I had to cut a little bit extra off of each of these backboards on the back of this bottom rail so that it would slide past the legs right here. I didn't bother putting any finish on this because after all it is for painting so it will get covered with paint and other things so not really worried about it. If you enjoyed this video make sure to like it. We have a full video showing you how to make these art canvases along with a full video showing you how to make a tabletop easel so make sure to head over to our channel check those out, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And we would love to hear what you thought of this project in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, be safe, and have a great day.